Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Tennis Manager. We're on episode 47. We are preparing for a new season. We're going to enter the 2027 season, but it's still 2026 for now. Uh, and we start with trying to find a replacement for Nakunye, who we lost right at the end of the season on a dip in form that caused her ranking to fall below the threshold. We needed to retain her. We found somebody who's a little bit of a shot in the dark. We scouted her forever ago, and there's only a handful of really good players that I've been able to scout and find and, and see, and that I've been kind of just scouting normally of late and not finding any quality. Uh, taking that shot in the dark time, trying to find somebody really good through that that has massive potential. Yet to find the one, but I'll keep that search up. But anyway, Kachegar, South African. We've we've gone after her before. She was never willing to sign. At the end of the season, a week ago, she didn't want to sign. But now that we are entering the new season, it's the first day of a new season, and suddenly, she's looking around, going, "Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to sign." So what does she want? She wants to be in the top 100. That seems like that's going to be easy for a player of Kachegar's quality. But how much has she improved? I have no idea. Next gen finals seems easy enough. Round of 64 in a Grand Slam might be a little hard. Round of 128 in a Premier 1000 could be a little hard, but we'll see how she does. Uh, if you get those first two, you seem pretty well destined. And let's see, Premier 280, round of 16. That seems doable. So, yes, we'll accept her objectives, and I, I will take her on as a promising player for four seasons. That sounds wonderful. And meanwhile, I think I could probably push this above 50%. We'll try 53. I'll add a little more to her bonus because finances are good. Let's try 54. She accepted. Okay, cool. That sounds good. But how good is she? Uh, we'll see. Looks like I probably need to go scout Denisa Bayova, as she was the winner of the girls tour uh, in the junior ranks this last year that seems like that would probably be a good place to start resetting because that's where we found all of, all of these good ones was through the junior rankings an 18 year old Czech we know a little bit about her but not much all right, so we check in on Kachager, and she has progressed pretty nicely. She's now a three-star talent with four to four and a half star potential, so she's a good one. Also, she's a late bloomer, and she's already at three stars, and she just turned 20, meaning it's not time to work with her yet. She needs work on her speed, her positioning, her skill shots are, are the... Well, the places that need the most attention. Montgomery is signing with a new sponsor. It's Nike or Mikey, whichever you call it. All right, so I let one of my coaches' contracts expire and I've replaced her with Sebastova, who is a very high quality coach to then manage uh, Kachager. But that leaves me because of her qualities as technical, tactical, and then overall as a coach. Uh, that leaves her with a vacancy of physical. And when you look at that, Ayala also is lacking quality uh, in the physical department with her coach, Christensen. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find a physical specific coach to add to the coaching staff for all three of our stars. We're going to need somebody with movement, physical abilities, and then mental. So it's going to cost us 20 thousand in order to uh, keep our business center upgrade on track so twenty thousand no big deal in fact we have a pretty healthy balance at the moment and we just brought in Oksachaska four and a half stars across the board so like Tunsonit very very good good trainer and now we have technical and physical training at top levels tactically Pretty good levels there, too. Christensen, the only one who's yeah, maybe a little bit off. Uh, training game plan, not perfect, but three stars is more than enough. The training game plan is kind of the biggest waste of time. It's not hard to keep that at a high level. Also, we have everybody with their own physio. So for the first time, we have complete staff and even a little bit of bonus staff for each. Let's see how that does with improving their training more rapid will it be 
So we open the season in Dubai. It's a 140, which is right about where we belong with Montgomery, maybe a shade below. And I was going to do a bigger tournament, but it's the Dubai 100K. So I thought maybe there's 100K involved. There's not. Prize money's 10K. So the game seem to, seems to have that locked in by level. And so there's no bonus money. And therefore, eh, kind of a waste to come here. But we'll see how she does to open the season. Try to get her confidence built early by seeing if she can get a few wins. Oh, never fails. Never fails. We always get these surprise losses against somebody who's hundreds of spots below us in the rankings. Kapow, I think, is three something in the rankings. 300 something. Uh, I don't think Montgomery's lost to anybody that low in, well, as long as she's been with us. So this is about the worst loss she's taken. It was just the second round, too. 28 winners to 43. 23 unforced errors to 16. She had almost as many unforced errors as she had winners. Not a good day. Off camera between last episode and this episode, I took all of those skill shots that we had pushed up to 10, pushed them all up to 11. So all four of them are at 11 now. And following that, my next target was serve power, which I very quickly brought that up to a 12. I'm going to keep going on that serve power. I want to get that into that healthy range. We're going to make it a 13 before we then move on to another target. Looks like spins is an another target. Short-term gain to get that up to a 13. Kachegar pushing right through the Hobart Open quarterfinals. She ended up making it to the semis before she got knocked out. So that's pretty good showing to open the season for her. And we're in Australia for the first Grand Slam of the year. Uh, Old favorite first season star Anne Lowell is into the round of 64, so she made it out of the first round. Oh my goodness. So we start the new year. Nakunye, for one thing, her ranking has plummeted, so she's gone from 204 down to 255. She's not with us. Remember, she's not with us anymore, but she has finally qualified for a Grand Slam. That was the missing piece was she kept getting to the third round of qualifiers and then missing and getting to the third round. I think she did it every tournament last year. She got, I, th I think once she got to the second round, the other times it was third round each time and then missed out. She finally qualifies and then she upsets the number two player in the world in five sets. What a phenomenal job for her. And who is she going up against? Kasin Seva. So our two forwards, and there they are <laughs> facing each other. Kassin Seva, though, only 59th in the rankings, not having done too much uh, since since we left her. Oh, wow, you got to be kidding me. Montgomery and Ayala were drawn to play each other. At least one of them will get to the round of 64, but what a tough way to start. Montgomery gets it pretty comfortably in four sets, Three double faults, though. Only one ace. Three double faults over four sets isn't that bad. Uh, it's okay. Winners, very similar between them. Montgomery, you can see she's a bit cleaner. Uh, definitely fewer unforced errors. And that seems to be the difference in this one. We had a potential matchup with Corey Goff, who I keep targeting. I keep trying to go after Corey Goff, but she just doesn't want to sign with us, especially when she just keeps on developing and she's getting higher and higher. She's now ranked 11th in the world, but she goes out in the first set with an injury, meaning actually we have an easy path right now to get to the round of 32. Took a little bit, but we do get there. Four sets. 13 aces and zero double faults, 50 winners. So we weren't great there. It was the aces that really set us up and being a little bit cleaner than our opponent with 20 unforced errors. Impressive stuff. And that's round of 32. Our goal for the year for Montgomery. <laughs> Difficult. Difficult set of goals this year. 280, 470 premier semifinals. She's already made a quarterfinal though. So I think that's going to be pretty doable this season. Quarterfinals in a Premier 1000. Not easy to do. She's got a ways to go to get there. Two rounds further than what she's ever done. Grand Slam. Round of 16. Highest she's ever been is right now round of 32. One, one more win and that's checked off. Rank 20 though. I don't know how we're going to get her up into the top 20 before the end of this season. Through continued development, I can see her 
inching her way into the top 30 but top 20 i don't know i don't know it's a big ask that's a that's a pretty significant jump i mean that's halfway from where we're at right now to number one roughly and look who it is it's frit vertova another one of our regular targets did she play with us for a little bit i i want to say frit vertova was with us for one season i don't know uh maybe not but she got through the first round via forfeit she got through the second round with the upset against the 19 seed and now we've got a fairly even match and we've got a legitimate shot of getting to the round of 16 let's go ahead and see this match in action we've beaten frit Fritova three out of four times i know we've had plenty of matches against frit Fritova with what was it kasen seva right that was her regular rival and maybe that's why i'm thinking of the name maybe it's not that she played with us i, I think we tried to sign her at one point but she wasn't interested but i was she was fresh on my mind because of her regular matchups i mean they played each other eight ten times right she was number one in the junior rankings when kasen seva was number two and that's who she eventually passed to get there whether we play slow or fast it's not going to make much of a difference here because i'm not an actual tennis coach i'm an actual basketball coach and my oh my uh the hardest thing about coaching in this era as in the COVID era is when i coached volleyball it wasn't bad when when you wear a mask and you have a group playing volleyball as we have a nice rally going here and finally the ball goes into the net that was montgomery's first score but with two balls into the net already three balls into the net uh ooh, that was close uh anyway volleyball season wasn't bad i've got a mask on and you can communicate with your players fairly effectively but basketball season totally different story a basketball on the court very loud bang 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 every dribble right uh, every time that ball hits a court there's plenty of noise coming from that and unlike volleyball season where everybody's calm and polite and enjoying themselves a little bit like a tennis crowd unless you're trying to play kind of oh come on montgomery is playing awful right now she is really struggling uh, she needs to get back on the front foot, and she does. Levels it at one game apiece, and she has not played well so far. So all she needs to do is clean it up a little bit. She's already had five or six unforced errors through two games and at one point. A raucous crowd. <laughs> Bouncing basketballs at all the yelling on court and from parents and referees' whistles and you throw all that crowd noise in and it's just with me with a mask on trying to coach my team holy crap it's challenging and i've left every game this season with a mega headache <laughs> and on the verge of losing my voice each and every time uh, including the latest game last night in which it was a valiant defeat against the league leaders but they played well they played well it's a growing team i have a young young team inexperienced team the youngest and in inex most inexperienced team in our league so uh we're, we're, we're having a, a a season for progress wow montgomery's hit the net how many times already I'm, I'm actually curious how bad is it through three and a partial games You're telling me she's had four she's had three net balls and one out not as bad as i thought apparently i thought it was more than that but that's through 26 points i mean for me acceptable is one out of ten one out of ten is acceptable uh, when you start doubling that up and, and hitting 20%, you run the risk of losing. And speaking of, we run the risk of going down two games to three at the moment. All right. All right. Let, let's speed this up, though. Let's speed this up. Like I said, I'm not going to impact this a whole lot. 
while I will impact a basketball game, regardless of losing my voice in the process of trying to make that happen. I wouldn't call that a full-on tangent, but it got a little bit... <laughs> it got a little bit tangent-like as we went through that one. But anyway, here we are. Uh, Breakpoint for, for, for Tova. Nope. Okay, we got it back. 3-3. Three, three. The hard way. For, for Tova attacks the net definitely a bit more than we do. Too many balls right down the middle. I mean, we really are not aggressive enough here. And yet we trail 3-4. to four. I mean, we keep losing and then just battling back. Now it's 3-5. We're on the verge of losing the first set. Come on, Montgomery. Should have this comfortably. And we don't. 6-3. A lot to do here. She's still pumped, at least. Do I need to change intensity levels? Make her more aggressive. Do we want to switch to like an offensive baseline play? She loses the first game. Let's go for that. It's 1-1, so it so far has resulted in winning one game, and it was without service, but now with service, she loses the next. So now she'll be without service on this one and on the verge of dropping 3-1, to one, unless she can get out of this thing. No, it is. She trails 3-1. Come on! Montgomery is having a very bad day at the office. Only 19 winners to 25, and 16 unforced errors. It's still 5. Frit Fritova has not had a single unforced error since halfway through the first set. Not one. And meanwhile, we have had loads of them. Do we need to get more defensive? Do we need to get more offensive? I mean, what... What to do? I wish I knew the answers. Finally, she wins a game. Okay, she is battling back. Two straight. Looks likely to lose this one, though, after going down 30 love, but she brings it back. On the break. Somehow still pumped, but... Fatigue, not an issue. Down two sets already. Yeah, this is... Worrying. I mean, there's plenty. It's the first Grand Slam of the year. But if she's going to rise to 20th in the rankings, she needs not only to finish that goal of getting to that next round of a Grand Slam, but she's going to need some consistent high performances to earn some points. We're going to have a hard, hard time hanging on to Montgomery for next year. She wants to be a winner. And we're still working on training her. 3-1 already. Okay, tactical instructions. What can we change? Let's make her... Which one's attack? Not getting any winners here. Frifferdova is so sound in her play. Every ball, every ball she's keeping in. Like, we can't get winners for the life of us against her. It is 4-3, though. 5-4. Chance to get one set back and stay alive in this thing. It's 5-5, five, five, though. Alive for now, and our tactical adjustments, at least at the moment, got us one set. But we're quickly on the verge of trailing by two games in this one. Was that the turning point in this match? Because she looks like she's cruising to 3-1, and she is. Fatigue beginning to set in here in the fourth set, though. Affecting Montgomery more than Frifertova. But she's up 4-2 here in set number four. Chance to draw level. 5-2. On the verge of doing just that. She only needs one more. And finally, for the first time, we see Fritova worried. She is stressed out by how this game has turned. There it is. Level. Two sets apiece. Decisive. Fifth set. Oh, 
fatigue though, fatigue is definitely got to be impacting us by this point. Physical fatigue level, the lower the level, the more power and accuracy your player will lose. Which means we are less accurate, we are less powerful at this point. And she's only slightly impacted in that, but what a start to this fifth set as we lead three games. And four. I think we might just pull this off. Come on, come on, pull it back. There you go, deuce. Advantage. Game point, she got it. 5-1. We're in a game set match situation, but we lost the seventh game of this set. It's 40-30, and there it is, game set match. Okay, she has done it. She's accomplished her first goal of the year, and that's definitely going to help her with the ranking situation. For Fertova, holy crap, she made that tough on us. Kajager just won an international 80 tournament. Oh, sorry, rookie 50, that is. And here are the 16 that remain. Top 20 so far for all of them. Top 23 for everyone. Osaka now ranked number two in the world. We are the only unseeded player left in the round of 16. Of course, most of the round of 16 has already been played out. Stakari, 18th in the world. If you have a chance of beating somebody, that's one of the better ones to go up against in the round of 16. But let's go ahead and just simulate this. See how she does. And she's out. She did win the opening set. She did get to two. But Skari back, uh, battled back and claimed victory. 74 winners for Mom Montgomery, but Skari had 90. Uh, not as unclean of a match. It was 33 unforced errors. It was better, but that's still a lot. Uh, but that's out of 300 points. That's almost 10%. It's what it needs to be to, to have some success. But Stakari was just a little bit stronger. Out in the round of 16, but that is perfectly fine. One, that pays very well. Nice payday on that one. Uh, but two, that's going to definitely boost her rankings. Kajager on a roll again, this time knocked out in the quarterfinal of a 160. But she's had a good start to the year with uh, quite a few green appearances on screen and not so much red as in wins. So over the last year, the technical average for Montgomery has gone up by over three quarters of one point. It's a pretty significant rise. Her mental average also going up by about a quarter of a point. And then the physical, even without any dedicated training, the byproduct of everything we're doing, the tournaments we're playing is quite high. She's very good in that department, uh, approaching 16 as an average. She has a few areas that are on the verge. Uh, anticipation, tactical, speed, return, spins, backhand accuracy. That we're going to see all of those level up easily. And as byproducts, as I haven't focused on any of those right now, my focus is getting that serve power to a 13. And then I think I'll focus on maybe the forehand and backhand power as well and bring all of those into that happy zone. Kind of, I, I want to see 13s and above. That's... That's my next landmark. I don't know why I focus on landmarks so much, but I do. I have an obsession with it. It's ever so slightly OCD in nature. Yeah, I've got to see those landmarks hit. And that's the that's the next one. So that's what I'm aiming for. Uh, and You know, we, we've got a ways to go, but we're not that far off. And I think we'll definitely get 13s and above this season in all of her technical attributes. So looking forward to it. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Catalan Gamer. Like comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.